All right, hey guys, welcome to another Q and A. Uh, and before we get too deep into this Q and A, um, <laughs> check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boys. Now let's get into okay. the next four or five questions. Uh, we don't have too many day. questions this week, so or this past couple of weeks. Well, we are, but they, a lot of them are like the same. Like we get new viewers, oh, and true. they ask like pretty Similar much questions. the same questions. So you've sort of already answered. Yeah, so anyway. we try to send them a link to videos that we did before. So that's mm -hmm. actually another good point here. Uh, that's a lot of housekeeping shit, but the point is, uh, you can search within our channel. So if you're already on our homepage oh, yeah. channel, mm -hmm. you can just basically type in Loser Automotive on YouTube, and then within our channel, any ideas or questions you have, you type it in there. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll see we have a shit ton of videos that may have already answered that. Um, so look, a lot of right. people are asking me new questions like that we answered, about HST, we'll send a link like, to you. Search HST across our channel. We'll have tons of videos. Um, or like, um, like insurance and stuff like that. So hopefully, and then any question that I guess we didn't cover or things that require more elaboration. Cause I find sometimes maybe we just touched on a subject, but we didn't go in depth about it. Um, so yeah, feel free to ask questions from, about that from, too. from, from there on kind of thing. Anyway, Good. Alrighty. Let's do the first question. So this is regarding 10 day permits in Ontario. Um, and we got a comment here about how 99% of people selling their cars privately will be selling their cars plated. So also no, so they'll be fit, which means Service Ontario will 100% issue plates. That's right, because they're, I guess they're fit, along with a $15 temporary sticker without, without a safety. You now immediately have plates and sticker. Oh, right. So in this scenario, you now immediately have plates and sticker valid for 10 days to drive around and go get your safety. I can confirm this works as I do it every week. They so, kept always say, always listen. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. let, let me, let me make a, a reference to that here. First of all, um, maybe we can put a pop-up for the video I made about ownerships, uh, letting you know that equally, I guess we can agree with the first part, majority of people are not aware that they're supposed to detach a plate before they give you the car. Mm -hmm. And based on your comment, wood for wood, I would interpret that to mean that you, the person is selling you the car with the plate. That means the car is still in the person's name that mm -hmm. you bought it from and the plate is in their name. And so you chose to get a 10 day permit on their name, I'm assuming based on what you're saying there, in order to uh, uh, drive it around and get a safety. Mm -hmm. um, but I spoke with a Service Ontario representative on that topic. So I am 100% sure that once the car is in a unfit title, you cannot get a 10 day permit until you have a safety inspection. Now, uh, yes, some mm -hmm. customers may give you the car with a plate, because like I said in a previous video we made, um, we're trying to let people know or remind them that the plate is not yours to give. You're supposed to detach your plates in the system and from off the car before you give it to somebody. Uh, literally, if you don't do that, then, you know, uh, you can get a parking ticket or anything that a person get can come back to you. So we're trying to educate people why they should exactly. do the proper yeah. detachment of the plate. And once you actually do that, the car does go unfit. And the moment it goes unfit, you will need yeah. a safety period. But for some reason, exactly. if well, like like he's saying that the, the car is fit. it is fit. That's why you're able to get the ten day permit because you're right. The car is fit because it's still plated because you know. The person who sold you the car wasn't aware that they were supposed to deplate their car. Right, um, but the, or, or the point of the, the point of that video was if the car is unfit, that you oh can't exactly, get yeah, the exactly. So, so, but he was just yeah explaining that in this scenario, which maybe is not, you know, the most, um, the way we want everyone to do it because there's a you know. We, I don't care how people do it. I'm just saying right. what the what the rule is right. and what the law is, and that's yeah, what exactly. they allow you to do. Now, yeah. if you are yeah. doing something in the gray area and, and get an attendee permit, mm -hmm. that's right. good on that, you, whatever would, you want to do. But, that scenario would... But would as good. per the ministry, once you detach mm -hmm. the plate from the car, they will put it unfit. And Correct. that's what the information yeah. they gave to us, and that's what we are given to you. Simple as that. Very good. Alrighty. And then, uh, oh, and just to, I guess just to clarify question two. So we get a lot of questions about when we do our cost reveals about what do we, what about HSD? Is that one of our expenses or one of, I guess, one of the costs? Um, so yes, we don't, we don't really include HSD. We do have to pay, pay HSD on the car when we purchase it. And we also collect HSD when we sell it. Um, but that's sort of like a separate, um, separate tallies. Exactly. So that's why I don't include it in the cost reveal. So in, in yeah. numbers in the cost reveal that I said in multiple videos before, um, 
we show what we pay for the car before HST. Mm -hmm. We show what the repairs of the car is before HST. And then also when we sell it, we do not include the HST there too. Uh, so that profits are without HST. And we an HST is something that um, we've explained before in a sense where it cancel each other out. Because uh, when I buy the vehicle, if I were to spend a thousand dollars, let's say, of HST uh, when I bought it mm -hmm. and when I sell it, I collect thirteen hundred dollars worth of HST. It means I'm net positive three hundred dollars HST, so I'm only owing the government three hundred dollars HST. And uh, to make things even a little bit more uh, not complicated, but to explain it further, the reason why we don't talk about HST here on that topic is complicated mm -hmm. because now that I have that $300 with the HSC I'm owing the government on that car deal. Keep in mind, I'm still running a business, so I'm paying HSC on other things. Mm -hmm. Every time I buy gas for my vehicles or I buy parts for my service shop, I'm paying HSC. Okay. So later on, I can still minus that HSC I'm collecting from that 300, and by the end of the year, possibly I'm not owing the government. There was any also HST. HST on the Carfax fee, and there was HST yeah. that we collected on, you know, basically the buy fee. Actually, so that's why the, the HST on the buy fee? Uh, on the on certain fees, not all of them. I can't remember. But that's Maybe, why we leave yeah. it out. It's but we not, just leave it it's not part of the profit and exactly. losses. It's totally yeah. a different game, a different yeah. beast. Exactly. But if you do not have an HST number and you oh, can't yes. claim your HST back, mm -hmm. it would be an expense for you. So yes, Maybe. I agree. If you're not licensed yet. And you don't have HST, you have to account for the HST when you, in everything that you buy, and and basically it will not be part of your profit because you can't collect HST when you sell it. Exactly. All right. Very good. Oh yes, and here this was a great comment just to, and it's great guys. Tell us about your if you have your um Ombic business application. Uh, submitted in OMBIC because we have a subscriber here who did share that they submitted their business application a month ago and have not heard back from OMBIC yet. So, and he's saying that there's been major delays at OMBIC. So that's great to know. Um, so yeah, keep us posted about um, your experience with OMBIC and, and how that's going for you. I think that's beneficial yep. to our community, right? So basically thanks, just thanks saying for that, sharing that. that he's that's has a know. huge delay, he just yeah, made a delay yeah. on his application. I know because I think we get questions about like how long does it take for them to approve the business application and it's hard to tell because like, like the subscriber is saying, um, you know, I guess it all depends on how many applications they're getting. And I don't even know if I want to go so far as to say like I'm not sure if on the caps they're like, you know what I'm saying? I don't think, I they, don't think they do. Uh, they, they have no reason to cap They're it. not being like, oh, they, we approved five people no, this month. So no, like, I don't think that's all. Because the more license they can put out there, the more money they exactly. make in fees. Yep. And in, you guys pay into the compensation fund. Mm -hmm. And every car you sell, you get them, what, five bucks or ten bucks right now? Ten bucks. Ten bucks, ten right? Bucks now, yeah. So, it used to be five dollars. Uh, we used to be, when we started, it was five dollars per uh, car that you sold. Yeah, now it's but you ten. Paid, now it's ten dollars. So. Yeah. And with but, inflation, we'll be surprised it'll be $20 next year. <laughs> double, <laughs> Who knows? Like, you know. but anyway, so they yeah. want that money in other words, so they're not going to limit the applications at all. Okay? Correct, yeah. Uh, I think this is where in we are. In fact, with all know. the extra applications, we're probably going to see $15 saved on their Omnic fees, right? <laughs> <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> For anyway. they, they might tell you inflation. They, I they, know. They want a reason to raise it. <laughs> right, well. Yeah. Um, so this is about, okay, this is a good question. As a wholesaler, can you export cars to any other country? I mean, is there any restrictions for exporting as a wholesaler? Yeah, so we made a couple of videos now again uh, as well. I think I sent you a link uh, to one that we made before. So to be clear, there are two separate licenses. You got to have a wholesale license or a exporter license. And if you're a wholesaler, you cannot export. And that's as per on big rules. And as an exporter, you can't wholesale. Right, so it's two so, separate licenses. But is he saying he has both licenses? Maybe no. if you're an exporter and a wholesaler, you can't have both. Can you apply for you both at the same time? Nope, you okay, cannot. That so question. that basically, he's just basically saying, as a wholesaler, can he export? And the answer is no. If you want to do multiple things, you have to apply for the general dealer license. Um, I think I gave a breakdown of that in another video. Uh, even if you do not want to do too much retailing of cars, but you want to have the flexibility of wholesaling and and, and doing everything, mm -hmm. get a general general dealer license. Uh, rent a small shed location where you can park one or two cars uh, so you can still have the option to retail once a year if you want to mm -hmm. and then you can do everything else you want just give yourself more flexibility okay yeah and then on the wholesale topic here i guess somebody want to know how, how i'm to a wholesaler, wholesaler in ontario okay so again that's um so in ontario ombic is the regulator for anyone who wants to become a dealer so you'd have to go visit the ombic website we'll we'll put a link you know yeah. we'll do that and then you would have to complete a business application and you would select wholesaler as the class of dealer that you wish to basically become or you're going to put a, a list a, a, a link we'll to your playlist to the oh no it's on all those oh, yeah. videos you have, have you can put a link to one of the playlists there for him okay to, yes and 
go from there. Yeah, Just it, it looks like a two-part question. It's almost oh. like there's a way he's mm -hmm. writing it. It seems yeah. like you got $50,000 budget to open up the dealership, but then you plan for the first four or five months uh, to still support the business with your job. Right, so it's oh, kind of right. like a, yeah. a, a, a two part, part two, like a right? Part uh, so uh, the way I can say it is, I don't think in the complications of running a dealership, uh, especially if you're a one man show, mm -hmm. you, you cannot do one foot in, one foot out. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm doubtful that you'll be able to run a full time job and run a dealership, launch a whole new business. So you gotta you gotta choose one and and, and go all in right. or be patient and, and do it later. Right. Now, in terms of the budget of fifty thousand dollars. Uh, we have a video um, that I could probably give you a link to as well. And, uh, and uh, the ideal budget, uh, I would say, is anywhere between $80,000 to $100,000 is a sweet spot to open up a used car lot. Just because uh, I, I went into more details in that video about that. But the idea is you have the first and last rent to pay wherever you go in. You have to renovate the location because most commercial spaces do not come nicely painted. So you'd have to renovate it. You'd have to get furniture. You have to put your signage up. Mm -hmm. And then you have to do some advertising yep. and then buy inventory. Exactly. And you may not necessarily sell inventory as soon as you open up. So you right. have to have a couple mm -hmm. of months rent. So mm -hmm. that's why I don't think 50000 would be enough. Unless you're going to open up, I'm not going to call it dodgy, but you're going to open up a very, very small shed location with maybe four or five cheaper units, it is possible. Uh, nothing is impossible if you make up your mind to it, but it will not be a comfortable start, right? Right, exactly. Question, do you need to have an export license and OMBIC business registration to claim taxes back? Or can anyone that buys off an auction claim taxes for an exported car? I'm currently working towards my export license. Best of luck with your business and channel. Oh, thank you. Um, so claiming taxes yeah. back, I guess we, we, we probably talking about Ontario here and talking about HST. Uh, so to claim taxes back, to claim HST back, you don't have to be a dealer. You don't have to be anything. You just have to have a licensed business and mm -hmm. have a HST, HST number. number. As yeah. long as you have a HST number, if you uh, export a car in the business name that has the HST number, you can claim HST back, okay? Mm -hmm. Whether you export a vehicle, whether you uh, sell it to another person here, uh, once we're talking about claiming HST, you need an HST number to play in the HST mm -hmm. game. Simple as right. that. Exactly. I think we can, I think that was the last one to wrap it up on. I think it's just two more guys. We're going to wrap it up very soon. I'm planning to start a dealership. A, man, a mechanic told me that I can park cars in his place and he's even interested to invest, but he can't do an agreement for sharing his place. Mm, will this be a problem to start a dealership, which has a big parking lot, but I don't have an ownership or a rental agreement. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, there's two be. parts to the problem already. The yeah. first part problem is you won't get a license for OMVIC there if you don't have a lease Rent, agreement. A rental agreement. So yeah. you're going to have to, you're going to have to give you some sort of rental agreement, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be a sublease or something. Second of all, uh, even if you're just sharing the location with him, he cannot be an investor in your business. OMVIC does not allow that unless he puts his name in mm -hmm. the business application mm -hmm. as a investor. So OMVIC would want to know that he has an invested interest in your business. Uh, basically mm -hmm. in order for him to be part of it. So that's two problems we identify there uh, that you didn't even ask. Um, so be careful, okay? Mm -hmm. So first, make sure you have a lease agreement or else you're no, not you gonna will, be able to do you it. You definitely need that. Um, and I know we haven't done that video yet, but that's basically the last part of the uh, Premise dealer amp uh, that we have amplification. To. Application is, yeah, exactly. Is, is you need, uh, OMBIC has to approve your location. And if you plan to share one, then you need a lease agreement. Yeah, and you need a sign, and you need like so whoever you're sharing your space with would have to agree to basically give you an office. Um, you need like a separate office even with your own key because Omvic wants you to store your records and actually in a safe to, space. I need to do some more research because now Omvic allows electronic records, mm -hmm. meaning that that kind of solves the problem of like having your own. You know what I'm saying? Because well, all your if all need, your records are in a cloud somewhere. Yeah, but they still want to have, have a bulletin. I know, but they do have a bulletin about that. So I have mm -hmm. to see. Follow up the yeah, updates on that. Yeah, um, but it, you know, usually Omvic is really strict on having like your own you know, office with a locked door and key so your records are very safe because these records are highly classified documents. And like, I like that. That's my lock. Yeah. That's how I stop the door when you lock it. I know. I often struggle with my key and the door. <laughs> that's tell. Yeah. Uh, anyways, yeah. Where were we? <laughs> yeah, so we were talking about shared locations and, and, yes, yes, and yes. yeah. So and you, invested interests. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you would need a rental agreement for sure. Um, I don't know if there's any creative way you can get around that. 
if he was going to apply for the license himself because it's his lease and oh, his property. Okay, you're right. But I guess if you don't want to open up the business, you probably want your name on the lease anyway. Well, if he's interested to, if he is interested to invest, like Neil's saying, then he may as well do the all the application. You guys do it as a partnership, and then right. he already have a lease to the property. Yep. And then just do the partnership legal one time because mm -hmm. he's willing to invest. He already have the location. That's right. You do a joint application to mm -hmm. Omvic together. That means both of your names are on the application. Perfect. Boom, oh, bidding bam, boom, you start done. 150 bucks an hour. <laughs> no, so that's, that's the solution. I'm glad we marinated on that further. So that would be the yes. solution. The solution would be for you and him to basically form a partnership um, and to basically do your dealer application together. Yes. Um, yes, that would be the way to do it. Yes. And okay. thank yes. you, Herod, for this uh, beautiful comment. This is, again, me uh, making a video about restart. If you haven't seen that video, put a little bit of a flip up there so you can check it oh, out it's yeah. just i've been running some numbers and i'm realizing more and more that if i put a little bit more energy on that four base service shop especially that's what saved us during the pandemic mm -hmm. so uh you when sure we are having all of those lockdowns and uh we couldn't sell cars or we could only sell cars by appointment all of the cavanas and the mm -hmm. uh online platforms uh we have here where we have canada drive and clutch mm -hmm. and whatever clutch. all the ways where people could buy cars online dominated during the pandemic even if car sales were up it's hard to find inventory so the used car game was very difficult to play during the pandemic and the service shop kept us open mm -hmm. so now i want to give the service shop the respect that it deserved and i want to run it fully as a four bay shop and see if we can get full capacity and money out of that mm -hmm. shop and let the dealership be hobby or rent it to somebody, like I was saying, so we can share it too. Yeah. And then the subscriber just giving us this reassuring uh, comment here mm -hmm. that it's a great idea. And uh, basically, I guess he's wishing us good luck. So we'll end the video on that great yeah. comment here. From Montreal too. So shout out to our viewers in Montreal. <laughs> That's so cool. Alrighty. So you're going to end it on the comment? You didn't read the comment. Oh, do you want me to read the comment? How okay. are they going to see the comment? Okay. <laughs> I will read the comment. It's a nice comment, I guess. Yes, from Amisha. It's a good way to end it. Yes. Hello, I'm new to your channel. First thing is, oh, yes, put numbers on your video. It is easier to follow. Yes, I, I do agree. We have a whole lot of videos that we... Um, I don't understand how to put numbers on it because we have so many videos. I but... know. Well, if there was a way to... Uh, yeah, to search it based on topics. Uh, we have playlists. Uh, I don't know if the playlists are helpful though, because I, I kind of wanted to clean up everything and try to put them in categories. Well, we just delete all the videos that again. Yes. That's that number that. in it. <laughs> <laughs> Restart. <laughs> I know. And action, yeah, anyway. So yeah, second part. And you can put numbers in the title. Like in the title, like when you name the video. I guess you, I guess you could. Like you say episode one, you episode see, two, episode when, three. When you number stuff is because the previous one is related, related, rela relative, related, related. Yeah. <laughs> that's another I can't talk. Uh, related to the previous video, it's almost like a series, right? So that's why you have to have one, two, three, four. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But if it is today, I'm talking about changing your goddamn brakes. Tomorrow I'm saying uh, the sky mm -hmm. is falling. The next day I'm saying I'm delivering a car to the lady you from know, grass store. I, you know, it's, it's different. Because we do so many videos, um, it's, it's probably because in this video you probably made mention to something. Because sometimes you mention a lot of I things. I have brain. I, say I know, I know. Sometimes, so then it's kind of like, okay, wait, what is this video? Anyway, but we tried to like. Yeah. We delivered a car on the weekend for a lady and she gave oh, us free yeah. bras. So uh, that's coming. You're going to have to watch this video. Uh, I'm going to put her stuff on Instagram so you can go support it, her. It was actually uh, quite a lovely experience. Yeah, I didn't really take pictures of her shop too much. Dana Ras can be in here, but I'll put her link on the Instagram here anyway. It's scatterbrain much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's end yeah. this video, guys. Okay. Yes. Um, yes. You will attract you soon. Now you have experience in your belt. Yes. Repair shop and auto detailing services is a must. You have multi. Yes. Right. You will have multiple income sources here in, in Montreal, in the Montreal area, a family garage shop that somebody owns. They mm -hmm. have three Ferraris. Maybe one day you'll have three Ferraris. Can you imagine having three Ferraris? I don't want three Ferraris. You don't want, what, what, what? Lambo. <laughs> Ferrari. <laughs> I'm having difficulties driving the GDI. So I don't know about, you know, you probably want to keep me away from your Ferrari. <laughs> Do we have a video I'm about that? The Lambo about the how Ferrari. I'm trying to start your push button start GTI? Yes, I'll make that's something out of that. That's also coming. Stay tuned. Subscribe for that. Oh, God. My, my wife can't even start a GTI and she runs a dealership. Imagine that. <laughs> but I don't. I run the behind the scenes part. So I wish I could start a car behind the scenes. <laughs> okay. No one had to show me. Like, I don't have I to think you might have to forget away. about this comment and just end this video. <laughs> I, mean, I know. 
Anyways, the whole point, I it is nice. Yes. Anyway, thanks I don't, for I don't it. like tooting our horn. Right? It's not. It's you're not tooting any horn. The I person know. gave gave a good comment. Just was complimenting you and we on want to all say your thank hard you. works. Yeah. And I want to <laughs> say thank you to thank appreciate you. that. We did see your comment. We did. Yes. We read it and we appreciate the kind words. Okay. Yes, Fair enough. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll end this here before uh, we bumble on, bumble on too much. Anyway. We'll say yes. Thanks for watching. Catch you next one. Peace. Thank you.